it's remarkable that a major city has not been destroyed by a nuclear weapon since Nagasaki in 1945. And the question is, how long will that sort of good fortune last? There are not only 16,000 nuclear weapons in the world, but there uh, is about 3 million pounds of weapons-grade uranium and about a million pounds of plutonium. The amount that you would need to make a very powerful nuclear weapon would fit into a small gym bag. It is 70 years since America dropped the atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. It killed 100,000 men, women and children. The American nuclear plant, which enriched the uranium for Little Boy, was built in Tennessee. It's called Y-12 and still operates today. It is the United States' most important storage facility for weapons-grade uranium and it is known as the Fort Knox of uranium. But at this, the most secure nuclear weapons facility in America, these three anti-nuclear activists, including an 84-year-old nun, Sister Megan Rice, were able to break in in 2012. At their trial last year, the pacifists admitted to getting past fences and security sensors, planting peace slogans and spending several hours in the complex before they were stopped by a lone guard. They were jailed for five years. Eric Schlosser warns that inadequate security at Y-12 and other nuclear sites is an accident waiting to happen. He says there are still about 16,000 nuclear weapons in the world. Terrorists only need to steal one. Standards have been set about how to run nuclear reactors, but not on how to secure the dangerous fissile materials that those reactors produce. And it all really stems your investigation from traveling around with these protesters. Yes. Um, and it was a break-in into Y-12, this critical facility for uh, looking after yeah. one key element of the nuclear arsenal, that led you into your discovery. There was a high-level official I met with in Vienna uh, who said to me, you should investigate this break-in because instead of being sent to prison, those three activists should have gotten the Congressional Medal of Freedom. It was an extraordinary, extraordinary security breach. And what was interesting, as I spent time with members of the Plowshares movement, who are radical pacifists, is that they really study these installations and sometimes take almost a year planning these break-ins. And we're very fortunate that they were pacifists and not terrorists because the facility that they broke into has almost a million pounds of weapons-grade uranium that could quite easily be turned into a very powerful nuclear weapon. In the course of this book, you muse yourself as to why Al-Qaeda or any other radical suicide bombing movement yeah. um, uh, hasn't done this. And, and you, you question whether perhaps the complexity of the actual process of delivering one of these bombs. Although at another point in the book, you also describe how uh, you'd only need to drop one element of the bomb onto another and you'd have it. The great difficulty of making one of these improvised nuclear devices is constructing it and getting away from it so that you would survive the blast. Uh, if you have a suicidal uh, tendency, that's much less of a problem. My concern is the reason that it hasn't happened yet is that nobody has seriously tried to do it yet. Nobody who's well-financed and well-trained. And in looking at the break-in at Y-12, it's sort of a, a case study in why we need to be concerned about this, pay much more attention to it, and spend more money locking this stuff up. I thought the most interesting example of where this looks horribly vulnerable was your own trip to look at the Minutemen missiles yeah. out in Colorado. Yeah. Um, and I think you were sort of surprised about how openly displayed they were. I was quite surprised. And some of these plowshares activists had encouraged me to drive into the missile fields and look at these silos. Most people don't realize, but we have 450 intercontinental ballistic missiles in the United States, mainly in the Great Plains that are just interspersed with farms, near little communities, with no armed guards. And I was able to just drive up to one of these sites, go up to the fence, and it wouldn't be easy to do, but it wouldn't also be impossible to do to get into one of these things, to get close to the missile, and you could cause some serious problems. See, the difficulty actually is that we now live in the sort of aftermath of the Cold War, yeah. thinking, ah, this is great, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's all over. Yeah. But of course, in truth, the threat from radical forces is far greater now than it ever was even uh, under the Cold War. 
Unfortunately, there are extremists today who are celebrating the slaughter of civilians, who are celebrating the destruction of cultural monuments, and who are willing to die in order to do that. Uh, we don't want any of those groups to get hold of a nuclear weapon or any of the fissile material to build one. And there's just not enough attention being paid to this problem. Well, USA Inc. Uh, did respond to the break-ins by these essentially clerical yeah. uh, uh, protesters yeah. uh, by jailing them. But has it responded by doing anything to tighten up the security? They changed the security at this site, and I met with the people there who are now in charge of guarding it, and I feel like they're quite serious about doing it. But it's the sort of change that can't just be done overnight, and it's a problem here in the United Kingdom as well. How I mean, so? Well, you have uh, a nuclear weapons facility uh, right in the heart uh, of Berkshire, not far from, from Reading. Old Amaston. And uh, those warheads are transported by road up to Scotland, and I hope that the security is very tight while they're doing that. You can do a perfect job of guarding 15,999 weapons, but if someone makes a mistake and loses track of one, it could be catastrophic.